Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have artist Elizabeth Zelasko. We'll see one of her videos and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight our guest is Elizabeth Zelasko. She is an artist. Uh, she paints icons. She does sacred art. She's going to tell us tonight about her art and its role in our life and our spiritual life especially. And we're now going to show you a little video of her painting icons. <laughs> Elizabeth, welcome to Life on the Rock. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. Now, you're a real life professional artist. Uh, you do commissioned work. Yeah. Tell us about some of the projects you have done. Oh, goodness. Um, the last really big one that I did was for uh, the Augustine Institute, and mm -hmm. it was a six foot painting of the Annunciation, which was quite an honor. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had never painted something that big before, uh, and it was just, it was, a, it was quite an experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you also do icons. Um, you've studied iconology, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, you could say iconography. <laughs> iconography. Yeah. And, yeah. and tell us about maybe the difference between icons and sacred art that we're used to. Yeah. So uh, when you think about religious art in general, mm -hmm. I mean, just it's pictures of Jesus, Mary, and the saints. Um, there's a big difference between uh, religious art and iconography in just in the style. Um, so icons are typically more stylized, and that's why they look the way that they do. They don't look like realistic representations. Um, so I would say that the, the Eastern churches lean more towards iconography, mm -hmm. and the Western uh, is more realistic. Right. And there's reasons for the symbolism of, the, of it yeah. being stylized. Yeah. And is there a different purpose for the two? Yeah, so um, icons are used during the liturgy in the Orthodox Church and the Byzantine Church, mm -hmm. uh, the Catholic, Byzantine Catholic Church. Um, they're used differently throughout the liturgy. Um, so you will see them um, on the tetrapod when you walk in. Uh, there's um, a table that's right down the center aisle, and you'll, you'll go and you'll venerate whatever icon is there for that mm -hmm. day, for that feast day. Um, and there's, they're also uh, used in procession a lot more than, than you would think like the Roman church. Um, we have processions, mm -hmm. uh, but I would say the Orthodox and the Byzantine may be a little bit more so with the icons themselves, right. yeah. And to say that it's stylized means that it's very symbolic and, and the symbols are done the same way, right, each, each Yeah, time. yeah, and I, I mean, it, it kind of, I think it lends itself to um, uniformity also, so mm -hmm. that you're, no matter what church you're in, there's unity in that mm -hmm. way, visually. Um, so that's helpful, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. But there's, um, so if you look at the face of an icon, the, the theology of the face, in a sense, it's almost like the theology of the body, the image of it. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the nose is usually really long um, and thin uh, as a sign that um, the saint or God is, is hearing your prayers. I know that sounds kind of funny, but mm -hmm. um, the incense that goes up, our, our prayers arise like incense, mm -hmm. so the saint is actually smelling our prayers. Oh. Um, the ears are usually bigger because they're listening to us. Okay. Um, the forehead is usually large as a sign of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, the mouth is usually smaller uh, as a symbol of um, that it's more important to 
to see and hear God as opposed to just, you know, talking all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's there's reasons that, they, there's things that you can read into, into the, the symbol of right. the face, yeah. And there's always that Greek lettering that stands for full words, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, when it's shortened like that, you'll see like a little squiggle over the top, but um, mm -hmm. by G for Jesus, it's usually I C X C, yeah. um, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then for Mary, it's always um, M P O V, which is Mother of Mother of God. Yeah. Yeah. And then oftentimes it's on gold leaf, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I I studied Russian Orthodox mm -hmm. iconography, and I think other schools do do the icons differently. Um, the way that I learned is a traditional way of using. Um, it's a liquid red clay called red bull, um, and they use this in the Renaissance times also. Um, but so it's a, it's actually like a liquid clay, and um, that gets pooled on the area where the gold leaf will be. Mm -hmm. And then to get the gold leaf to adhere to the clay, the iconographer has to breathe onto the clay, which is very biblical. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of meditate at that point on how God breathed life into Adam. All right. Yeah, and so as soon as like the, the moisture from your breath hits the clay three times, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you breathe three times, and then you lay the gold leaf down, and it just sticks to it. It's right. uh, like magic. And why the choice of the red clay? I, it, I thought that was interesting because yeah. we're in Alabama. We're known for red clay. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. even think it, I think the name means that in Indian language. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, there are, to my understanding, I don't know Hebrew, but mm -hmm. there are three words that sound exactly the same. Um, and one is Adam, and one is red, and one is clay. Oh. And it's something like Adam, Ad, um, I, won't, yeah, I won't embarrass yeah, myself, yeah. it's something. <laughs> but it sounds, they all sound like the word Adam. Okay. Uh, so they have kind of thought maybe traditionally that Adam was pulled from red clay. Which is kind I of interesting. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's all the Alabama guys down yeah. here. <laughs> And then also, I, I saw in some of your process that you have the sketch and then like you etch into the wood. Talk about yeah, that part. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, you carve into the gesso. The gesso mm -hmm. is kind of, I, again, I assume people know what gesso is. Mm -hmm. It's just primer. Basically when you paint your wall at home, you usually put a primer on. That's okay. what gesso is for mm -hmm. artists. So we, we'll prime the wood. Mm -hmm. um, by laying down layers of gesso, so it's uh -huh. white. Because if you just paint on wood, the wood just is, is porous, so it just sucks up the paint. Mm -hmm. um, so that stops the paint from soaking in. Mm -hmm. um, but so the gesso is the thing that you carve into. Okay. Um, and it, it, it's practical. I think a lot of things in iconography are in art too. I mean, there's a practical side and then there's also just the symbolic understanding of it also. Right. Practically, when you carve your image into the gesso, you don't lose your drawing then. You can right. kind of continue to paint layer upon layer and still see that initial drawing, okay. as opposed to just painting on top of pencil, which which your pencil might get lost or, or smudged away. Right. Uh, the symbolism for that, though, is that um, the drawing is not just a, a surface issue. It's deep. It's written deep. Like the mm. Word of God is written deep on our hearts. Mm. And so it's carved into the stone of our hearts, yeah. so to speak, and it becomes one with the board as opposed to just floating um, kind of superficially right. on top of it. And I think, right, I think I've heard you say that even, yeah, like the symbols that are used in iconography are universal and it's symbolic that the theology doesn't change. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's great beauty in keeping traditions alive yeah, in that way. Yeah. Um, there's also great beauty about um, artistic freedom too. I know that we've had yeah. more freedom as artists in the Roman church to yeah. express certain ideas um, right. and different aspects of the theology. Right. So it's not that it's bad you know, right. to have that mm -hmm. freedom, but, um, but I definitely think that there's a strength in keeping um, certain traditions alive and yeah. passing that wisdom down throughout the, the generations right. of, of artists. Yeah. yeah, and it definitely just strikes you as so spiritual. Like when you see an icon, it's like, that's a spiritual work. It just it just yeah. hits you strongly. <laughs> that, yeah, because it's not it's not art in a you know I mean it's yeah. not um, it's different than art. Yeah, I think religious artwork is is um, is is just it's just <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's pointing to the, like, no. <laughs> the, the deepest values and the source of all 
truth and beauty. It points yeah, to God. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I mean, you can you can get very inspired by looking at a landscape painting. Yeah. But the sacred, right, is something else altogether. Right. An experience um, to be standing in front of something. Yeah. yeah. I, I just recently finished a commission for the Denver Art Museum. Mm. They wanted um, a replica of a 14th century icon. Um, so they're, it, it's, it's a triptych, um, so when they open it up, they'll see the different stages of how the icon has progressed. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the plain wood to the gesso to the, you know, the red bowl um, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth until a finished icon. Um, and it's just, I was praying the whole time that people that would be in front of this thing would maybe have an experience um, mm -hmm. because it is an art. It is different. Right. I think it's interesting to, you know, see how they were made, but I, I really do hope that people can sort of, you know, feel feel God through uh, his his holy images. You know, right. yeah. we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Elizabeth Zalesko, uh, so don't go away. Welcome back. Um, Elizabeth, you make a strong point about the need for sacred art in the home. Tell us about that need. Yeah, um, you know, our homes are, are little churches, uh, mm -hmm. the domestic church, whether you live with a big family or you live alone. Um, I think we all kind of learned that in 2020 in a mm -hmm. different way. Um, but I think it's really important to bring sacred artwork into your home. Um, it, it basically, any, any religious artwork that you hang in your home kind of stands as a silent witness mm -hmm. to the truth, and it, and it raises your thoughts to God, so why would you not? Mm -hmm. Why would you not? Um, also, our homes should be an extension of who we are, so if we're Catholic, we should live that out authentically uh, in our homes, not just at church on Sunday. Right. Um, so, so religious artwork should be a part of our, yeah. our homes, our lives. I didn't realize this, but I've heard you talk about it. There's a big movement like in reality TV and stuff about decorating and expressing yourself. And mm -hmm. so uh, we need the Catholics need to catch that wave, right? And <laughs> promote art. And, uh, yeah. and, and you also talk about the need um, to foster good artists and craftsmanship and things um, and about communities you're trying to form. Talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So artists in general need community. Mm -hmm. um, Catholic artists need Catholic artists community. Um, so in Denver we have started a, a small group um, called the Artist Guild of Denver Catholics um, and it's going really well so far. We have we have big hopes for it uh, yeah. but really it kind of sprung from this need uh, of needing community and needing support. Um, artists aren't natural uh, businessmen mm -hmm. so <laughs> right, right. we need support in that way too. Yeah. Um, it, it's hard to it's hard to be an artist in general. I think um, They're financially. Always starving and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I try to claim abundance and not, <laughs> not a starving yeah, nature. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it can be hard. It can yeah. be hard for sure. Um, but yeah, we need we need we need excellence from our Catholic artists, but we also need jobs for them as well. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, to to consider like commissioning. And we, at the Friar, we, we, we commissioned uh, an icon. That's a mixture of Roman style and elements, but mm -hmm. and it, it is a blessing. We have it in our refractory where we eat, and, um, and I know God uses it. It catches my attention. It's Jesus with the lamb on his shoulders. Mm. And, and I, so I think in the home, you could be reminded of family themes or the presence of Christ. It's so, and the trick too, I think, is to slow down. We were talking about this earlier, just our pace of life, our hurry, our worry. It takes away from our ability to notice. And yeah. and so, you know, we need to art in our home, but we also need to, you know, have that time to notice it and yeah. to pray with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been thinking about that a lot lately, just, mm -hmm. um, you know, if beauty is so powerful and so important, then, you know, why why is the faith in Europe kind of is sinking a bit when they're surrounded by so much beauty um, because it, it's because we're human we can just get used to beauty it, which is so funny to think of but we really do need to ask God to help us to see more clearly uh, the beauty that's around us I think it's just our human nature to become kind of numb to things and, and our scrolling on the phone culture that we have now and yeah. uh, the artwork in our homes even sometimes can just maybe not speak loudly enough we need to really sit with them 
Right. Um, and I moved to Colorado. My um, the first time I was driving with my brother to to work one day, and I was like, "This is this is your view? Oh my God! <laughs> like, the, the mountains were spectacular. I just thought, how can you you can look at this every day? Mm -hmm. You know? And 14 years later, I'm in Colorado still, and and I have just become accustomed to them. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's like. We just we can do that. We we lose sight of the beauty of our spouses and our children right. and our churches, and um, we really need to ask God, I think, to help us to see again um, and to see to see beauty more mm -hmm. clearly, the beauty that's in front of us. And I find too, like just cultivating a personal prayer life, and outside of maybe you know the church or being in a church or something or the family rosary, but just praying during the day. I find opens up like a hunger for finding God in nature or mm -hmm. something beautiful. Yeah. I just had this experience. I was on retreat and saw a painting that, you know, is in the chapel and it's like I never really paid attention to it until <laughs> I'm praying more and then all of a sudden it's more meaningful. You uh -huh. know? So yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good and story. I think it's important too, mm -hmm. like you said you there was something that has been striking you about the Good Shepherd mm -hmm. image that you that you have and yeah. it's I think it's important to pay attention uh, when you do see something, I mean, don't, you know, think about the, the, the religious artwork that comes mm -hmm. into your home. Don't just get it because it's religious, but, but maybe if an image strikes you, if it makes you pause, you know, bring that one into your home if you can get a copy of it or, or, or purchase an original. But, you know, I, I think it's important to listen to those little nudges. I think it's the Holy Spirit. I mean, you're just, right. ah, something about that. I need to meditate. I need to stop there. I need yeah. to wait a minute and just see what God has to say to me through this particular image. I think yeah. he speaks very, very loudly through, through artwork. Right. Yeah. Now, if someone wants to see your art, uh, do you have a website or Instagram? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my name. <laughs> yeah, elizabethzelasco.com. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it, so I have, um, I take commissions, but I, um, I, I started the website just to make my artwork more affordable for, for more people, so I have if I have prints. a painting, I do yeah. prints. Yeah, yeah, I sell prints of it through there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been great. It's been a real blessing. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, we have just like a, a minute left. Um, you you said something that struck me that ninety percent of our learning is visual, and we're so saturated with media today. Yeah. In some ways, the enemy is definitely capitalizing on that. Big. T yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. what would be your exhortation about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not anti cell phones mm -hmm. or anything or anti social media. I've, I've been really blessed through social media, um, as an artist, just to kind of, to, to not rely on the gallery system, mm -hmm. um, and to work for myself. It's been, it's been a real blessing and has connected me with lots of other Catholic artists. Um, but I would say we really have to be good stewards to our, to our brain. Mm -hmm. Um, our brains are, are really powerful machines. Mm -hmm. um, and we can remember visual, visually, we can remember things um, uh, to an astounding degree, the images yeah. that we see. Think of like maybe a scary movie you saw when you yeah. were five. You still know exactly what it looked like, don't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get that stuff out of your head. So I think that we need to be better stewards to um, our visual system. What, what are we, just be aware of what we're letting into our sight yeah. through our phones. Yeah, um, yeah and, and reclaim that, really. Right. I think um, it's important. Yeah, and I I found too that adoration can help. I think to mm. purify that. Um, I agree. To undo agree. some of the damage we've done yeah. through modern television. Yeah, but, uh, I was just thinking about today. I, I was able to go to adoration today for a little bit. Yeah. And just yeah. I mean, here's just this one, this one image. That's yeah. it, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No yeah. scrolling. I'm not scrolling through anything. It's just you, and you're so simple and so beautiful right. and so profound. Yeah. You know, like let me just just clean me. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, yeah. thank you so yeah. much for joining us. Thank you. It's great having you. Yeah, thank you. Well, for our Into the Vineyard Challenge this week, I invited Elizabeth to join us up on stage. Her brother John's away on retreat. But uh, I, I enjoyed the conversation uh, this week very much. We're in a media-drenched culture. We have images all the time that are uh, influencing us. We need to make space for sacred art, right? We need to pray. We need things to, around us to help us pray. So with that yeah, set up, I'll let you give the challenge this yeah, week. Yeah, <laughs> my challenge will be, um, 
for you to get sacred art into your home and to be intentional about which images you bring in um, and to be aware of the images that you're seeing on your TV or on your phone. Um, let's win the battle uh, for Christ in the, the images that we bring into our, our, our visual uh, mm -hmm. system. <laughs> Amen. I'll send you to the vineyard with a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. May He send His Holy Spirit into your heart to lift your heart to prayer, that you may be inspired by all that He's done for us. And may God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock.